Ironically, it is the hottest commodity during a heat wave, ice, which for some means really good business rising as fast as the thermometer. A St. Joseph man gets caught with meth while he was already being booked in jail on a completely different case. A medical examiner has ruled that the injuries that three month old sustained were not life threatening. He's expected to be OK. Let's say I'm a hacker. If I created a Wi-Fi hotspot in any public place that's unsecured and then you logged into it with your laptop, whether it's email passwords, credit card numbers, any important documents saved in your computer, I suddenly have access to it all. The problem is not in the newer model Jeeps. Those all have gas tanks on the side of the vehicle and those are fine. The problem is in older model Jeeps where the gas tank is in the back bumper. Suspicious activity in a local motel parking lot and now two people are under arrest for illegal drugs. More than 6,200 families in the city of St. Joseph utilize food stamps. If they lose that assistance, they lose the ability to shop inside a grocery store aisle. But it creates a bigger problem, and not just for food banks. Bob, Ira Glazer first came to Wireco as a consultant back in 2001. He eventually worked his way up to CEO, and he is the man who was hired to rescue the company. Well, the Maryville rape case has garnered a lot of attention publicly. The fact is, the issue is a lot bigger. I'm standing in front of 541 flags. Each flag represents one woman or child the YWCA in St. Joseph served last year. But even if the initial tuition is paid for in full by the time a college student arrives on campus, it's the extra fees that can get them into trouble, especially textbooks. It's not long before the price of those can force a college kid to feel like they're buried underneath it all. Personal drones can fly several hundred feet up into the air. They have standard definition and full HD cameras depending on the product you buy. They've attracted the attention of hobbyists, but also the attention of lawmakers. The Catholics around the region heard that this had been something people were aware of since December. Today they're hearing that it's something people have been aware of since May. Why should they believe you this time? I, I can't uh, get in people's mind and heart at this moment uh, to, to particularly answer that. A sense of relief uh, went through my mind. For John David Cousins, Thursday's trial of Bishop Robert Finn brings back a flood of emotions. Last year, when the Sean Radigan story broke, he received a phone call from a friend whose four-year-old daughter was a victim of Radigan. That phone call would have been painful enough, but then his own memories flooded back to his mind. That's because John David Cousins is also a sexual abuse victim. Knowing what happened to me and what I went through, even though I don't recall any pictures being taken, but just knowing what was there and the sickness of it, it just got my mind turning. Cousins says he was one of four kids molested by a Kansas City Monsignor. He was nine years old when the abuse began. It would continue for five years. The other three boys have all died one from suicide. Cousins is 42 now. He's the father of a three year old. But that phone call last year brought childhood horrors back to life. It's a daily battle, especially for not dealing with it for 30 years, you know, being forgotten. And then all of a sudden you wake up and you've got a life that was just treacherous to deal with as a 42 year old man. I'm dealing with it as a nine year old kid. Cousin says he doesn't want this to be seen as a crusade against the Catholic Church. He just wants justice for victims. It is about a man who did wrong and a man who did wrong with no accountability. In Kansas City, Greg Miller, Fox 26 KNPN. Heartland Security would say it's a sign of the times. And, and gone are the days where hospitals, schools and um, churches or place of worship or places of sanctuary, you know, all if you watch the news almost on real time daily, you see an incident of one of those type of facilities. Derek Kahn's is Heartland security team leader. He's also a retired sergeant in the drug strike force. He was a tactical team leader, ran street and undercover operations and was a sniper team leader. He cites several incidents recently at Heartland where random people have come in armed, especially around our ER. Um, we have, uh, that is a very high emotional tense place that take over and we really deal with truly life and death situations here. So Heartland's board gave cons the green light to formulate a plan to arm his guards. It, it, once again, it's, it's reflective of the fact that, um, you know, th they have a responsibility and, you know, it's, it's been very uh, sad to see.
We contacted hospitals within the region, including North Kansas City and St. Luke's, neither of which have armed guards. But they also said it's a decision each hospital should make independently. Rules of engagement would be no different. Uh, we would uh, control the scene until law enforcement would arrive, then they would take over the scene and handle the situation. But I guess my point is it would be different because now you'd have the ability to kill. That is correct. Cons insists the officers would go through extensive training, further background checks than what they already have. And he is clear, if an officer does not meet those new requirements, you don't carry a firearm. Greg Miller, Fox 26, KNPN. <laughs> it goes without saying, kids can learn a lot from a soldier. I was excited that I finally got to meet him. But that soldier would say he learned a lot from these kids. You know, it's, it's an amazing thing to be in a hospital and in the situation I was in and receive the support and the letters and the, the just the, the, the love coming from, from people, honestly, I've never met before. First Lieutenant Jason Church has made remarkable progress since his life completely changed last August. He was a platoon leader on a daily patrol on the front lines. His troops had just cleared a route for engineers. As I was walking toward the village, a few red flags came up. I saw that uh, um, there was no villagers out, which usually means the area is abandoned. There was no footprints anywhere, and there was rock formation signaling to the locals from the Taliban that not to go in that area. One of his soldiers stepped on an IED. It malfunctioned, but in the process of finding a different route to go back, his world went dark. As I came to, the, the dust and all that stuff was up in the air, and I heard my men screaming and things like that, and I came to realize that the legs I stood on for 23 years were no longer there. He's been recovering at Walter Reed Medical Center ever since, but a big part of that recovery came from his aunt, a reading teacher at Noyes Elementary School. Students began writing letters, sending care packages, and putting a quilt together. It became a real-life lesson in patriotism and support. A lot of these students didn't know anybody that had a serviceman that, or a service woman that was injured or involved in service, and so this was a connection through me this was a connection for them to make. One of those students affected the most was second grader Anna Case. I kind of felt sad and I kind and um and then I decided to pray for him. I am a man of faith and, and there's a reason though, even though that I often tell people that, you know, I've had my legs taken away from me, God's given me a platform to stand on. I don't look at this as so much of a disability as much as it's enabled me to do things. So Lieutenant Church spent the day talking to these kids about tolerance, being fair to others, and emphasizing how important their support was to him personally. And apparently that message was well received, not just by students. Greg Miller, Fox 26, KNPN.